Hello and good morning and welcome to another episode of Wake Up Well and our devotional series that we are in the middle of. Today I'm going to be looking at Psalm 49. I'm just going to read it to you then I'm going to, as usual, uh, share a couple of thoughts, a couple of musings and maybe um, a couple of challenges as well uh, on what this psalm can teach us and what is uh, applicable um, for our discipleship. So let me read it, Psalm 49. Hear this, all peoples, give ear all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, I will disclose my dark saying on the harp. Why should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity at my heel surrounds me, and those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches? None of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly, and it shall cease forever. And he should continue to live eternally, and not see the pit. For he sees wise men die, likewise the fool and the senseless person perish, and leave their wealth for others. Their inner thought is that on their houses that will last forever, their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man, though in honour, does not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the way of those who are foolish, and of their posterity who approve of their sayings. Like sheep they are laid in the grave, death shall feed upon them, the upright shall have dominion over them and in the morning, and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave far from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Do not be afraid when one becomes rich, for the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though he lives, he blesses himself. For men will praise you when you do well for yourself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. A man who is in honour yet does not understand is like the beasts that perish. Uh, Psalm uh, 49 uh, teaches many things. and um, It really gives us an insight into um, the psalmist's attitude to wealth and riches and money, and obviously that is something that shapes our own lives. Um, and I think probably the most important lesson that it teaches us is on the true value and purpose of, of wealth. Uh, scripture recognises that um, uh, wealth and possessions can be powerful tools uh, for both good and for evil. Therefore, God has uh, spent a lot of time um, instructing his, his children, instructing us as Christ followers on how to view and use the blessings that he has bestowed upon us in terms of a monetary sense. I think the key uh, to, to understanding Psalm 49 and a summary of its teaching on wealth is found in verse, in verse 20, where it says, A man who is in honour yet does not understand is like the beasts that perish. Wealth, like all things bestowed upon us by God, must be used in accordance um, with his plan and according to his purpose. So here are just two quick lessons I'd like to draw out of Psalm 49. Firstly, the psalmist uh, repeatedly warns uh, the reader, repeatedly warns us not to put our trust in wealth because it does not last and it cannot save us. Truly, no man can ransom another or give God the price of his life for the ransom of their life is costly and will never suffice that he should live forever and never see the pit for he sees that unless the wise die the fool and the stupid alike must perish and leave their wealth to others that's verse 7 to 10 ultimately ultimately when we leave this earth we will take nothing with us we will stand before the lord on judgment day and he will judge us for our actions whether we have received salvation but we take nothing with us no wealth no possessions and secondly, Psalm 49 alludes to the fact that wealth can be used in accordance, according to the guiding, guidance provided by the Lord, can have an eternal impact. In verse 14, the psalmist states, The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave far away from their dwelling. The psalmist goes on to say, like, uh, God will ransom my soul from the power of hell, for he will receive me. Wealth cannot buy our salvation. And the use of our wealth to do good works cannot earn a salvation. However, however, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour will use their wealth to advance his kingdom according to his guidance. Now, I grew up in a missionary family. We were not rich by any uh, stretch of the imagination. We lived uh, on partner support as my parents uh, worked in Eastern Europe. I remember my father always saying to me, and this is a life lesson I've taken with me my whole life, 
money is a means to an end and not an end in itself. And that's so true, isn't it? The money that we have have been given according to God's provision, we must use it wisely according to his guidance, as the psalmist says. We must um, invest in, in missionary projects. We must invest in people who want to live by partner support. We must use our uh, our money and our possessions and our um, things like that to advance the kingdom, not let them be an end in themselves. Have a good day.